So last week we reacted to the other three depth charts of teams in the NFC North, the Bears, the Packers, and, and the Lions. And we thought it's only fair that a Vikings fan takes a look at the Vikings depth chart, even though the Vikings are stacked to the T's. I love it. But, I mean, there are some spots where the Vikings are thick, uh, T-H-I-C-C, and other spots where the Vikings are you know, kind of thin. So let's take a look. But So we'll start at quarterback. Of course, you got Kirkua, Jerome, Ezekiel, Cousins, going to be the QB here for the next two years. Maybe? Them. And then Kellamon, the third round pick. I think that eventually he will uh, secure the QB2 job in training camp and preseason. Uh, during OTAs, it was a lot of Jake Browning and Nate Stanley running with the twos. Oh, yeah, we could slide over. Slide and enhance. Yeah, Nate Stanley, Jake Browning, they're chilling. I think they will keep all four in the sphere, uh, given that there is a 16-man practice squad just like last year. So I, I do think that it will be these two, uh, Kirk and Mond on the 53, and then Browning and Stanley on the practice squad. Running backs. So, of course, they got Dalvin. The, for me, the best the best running back in the National Football League, if, if he can stay healthy. Yes, yeah, so you got Alexander Madison as RB2. I, I like him heading to year three. But you do have a guy like Kene and Wangu. There you go. Very deep on the depth chart. You re-signed Amir Abdullah, who's a decent receiving back as well as going to be in the kick return mix. But I do think that Wangu will win the kick return job outright. And then I think that he could rise. I think that he could have some really nice carries in preseason and training camp that ascend him to the running back two spot uh, or you know, at least competing with Alexander Madison to get the scraps that are left over after Dalvin Cook's. That's right. Of course, the best fullback in the game, CJ Ham. Wide receiver wise, I like so most R lads depth charts have a, a slot receiver listed. I like that they don't even bother. It's like y'all ain't running eleven personnel. Shoot, uh, but you got Jefferson and Thielen, the best wide receiver duo in the National Football League, and then behind him. It gets a little bit dicey. So you got BC, who, was remember, was a starter over Jefferson last year for two games. You got Chad Beebe, uh, who is back, who was an RFA. They didn't tender him, but they brought him back at the league minimum. Dan Jacena, six foot three, runs like a deer, was a special teamer last year. Needs a lot of refinement. Uh, and I... I'm still not holding out hope that he's going to be like a really solid receiver in the National Football League. I think that he could be a high-end special teamer for sure, but receiver, nah. You got K.J. Osborne last year was the fifth-round pick out of the U by way of Buffalo, and he was supposed to be the kick and punt returner and wide receiver 3-4. Didn't pan out uh, in his rookie year, but maybe get someone going year two. You got Blake Prohl uh, as a UDFA. You got ISM, Amir Smith-Marset bringing some speed on the outside. Uh, as a fifth round pick coming to Iowa, as well as uh, Wap Filior as, and also Myra Mitchell, two other UDFAs. Tight ends. So you got Irvin Gronklin. It's going to be a one two punch. Uh, I think they will fit in swimmingly, uh, absorbing those 600 plus snaps that Kyle Rudolph played last year. I'm really bullish on Irv in year two, even though yeah, it was ever like, eh, well, I don't think it changes Irv's role. Yes, it does. I wish you, I wish you weren't a liar. Nah. Uh, and then Brandon Dillon. <laughs> Uh, that's not me just calling Zimra a bullface liar. That, that's a reference to the Will Ferrell SNL sketch, so calm down. They got Brandon Dillon, the Marion Barbarian. Hasn't really done much in two years. So I, I do think that Zach Davidson, the punter slash tight end from Central Mizzou, will, uh, will take over as tight end three. Maybe they keep uh, Dillon on the practice squad. That would make sense. Bueller. Bueller. Also, you got Shane from University of Minnesota Mankato. But what's really important here is the offensive line. So I think eventually this will be this uh, – so close. They actually have this flip-flop. So Derisaw, I think, has a better chance of starting a right guard week one than Der- – uh, excuse me, Davis week one rather than Derisaw over Rashad Hill. Uh, I, I, You already have seen why Davis get some first-team reps over Dakota Dozier. I think there is a comfort with Rashad Hill. Plus, I think they want to take it very slowly with the groin. But eventually, left to right, it will be Derisaw, Ezra, Bradbury, Wyatt Davis, no matter what, and Brian O'Neill. Hopefully on a new fat contract. Hopefully not too fat, but you know, decently fat. And then you know, they sort of have the rest of the uh, of the depth chart sort of, sort of here uh, over there. Derisaw is with the twos. Samia, they got right at left guard. Uh, Mason Cole working at center, uh, traded from Arizona for a six-round pick. Oli Udo has been the second-team right tackle. And then... You do have uh, Kyle Hinton mixed in here. Uh, they have Blake Brandle playing center, which is kind of odd. Uh, Zach Bailey they have playing tackle. And Cole Cabral, uh, who they signed out of Arizona State, uh, formerly of Houston, uh, he's also in the mix into your offensive line. A uh, uh, guy to keep an eye on is Evan Kazarzik, where he came in as a UDFA tryout. Well, he's a UDFA of 2020. 
They brought him into rookie camp, and he impressed enough to make the 90-man roster. That does bode well for him for potentially making the practice squad. So, yeah, keep an eye on uh, good old number 61 defensive side of the ball. Ah, sexy time. Sexy time. So the Vikings were so deficient last year due to injuries, due to a lot of young players coming in and replacing vets, and Zimmer's just like, no, no mas. So you got to kneel the real deal Hunter back basically on a contract year, and it'll be great to see uh, Daniil coming back for the herniated disc in his neck. They re-signed Steven Weatherly, and I think that he could be in the mix early as a starter, just be, just given Andre Patterson's comfort level with him. And the other young guys, you, you do have DJ Wanham, who they have listed behind Jalen Holmes. I don't know if I believe that. I think this might be it for Jalen Holmes because uh, Holmes had a huge opportunity last season and he didn't grasp it. He, he just didn't. And then you have third round pick Patrick Jones, uh, the second out of Pitt, as well as Janaris Robinson coming out of Florida State. Two guys that have a lot of potential long term. Uh, do they get in the mix as young players, as rookies? Maybe uh, in specific sub packages, sure. Uh, and then also the defensive tier. The Vikings might have the best defensive tackle room in the National Football League. You got Pierce and Diesel Dalvin Tomlinson. You got Sheldon Richardson as your third DT. I mean, come on, baby. You got Armand for Watts backing up Pierce at nose, even though uh, Tomlinson's going to moonlight there some uh, some as well. Uh, James Lynch is in the mix. Jalen Twyman, hopefully he's healing up and is going to be good to go for camp. And then also you have Hercules Mata'afa, Jordan Scott, the UDFA from Oregon, who they do like to a degree. Yeah. And you got Kenny Wilkes and Jordan Brailford uh, in from last year as well. Linebackers. So it's Barr and Kendricks, and it is a sub-package league. So you basically do play two linebackers in Zimmer's defense. Uh, it's interesting. They do have Ryan Connolly listed as the weak side starting linebacker, which, you know, uh, I think eventually that will go to Nick Vigil. But I, I do think that Troy Dye and Chaz Surratt, the two young guys, uh, will get in some time, and especially playing on special teams. Blake Lynch, who is really interesting, the former cornerback safety, wide receiver, running back, did play uh, some uh, decent football towards the end of last season. Uh, he is very intriguing. You got Cam, Cam Smith come back from open-heart surgery. Uh, you, you do have Tuff Borland, uh, the uh, UDFA, coming out of the Ohio State University, where he's all heart and hustle, did not test well at all. Nah, not great. And Christian Ellis, who does have some experience rushing the edge from University of Idaho, go Vandals. And then you get into the cornerback room. You got Patrick Peterson, and you got Cameron Tiny Dantzler. They got Gladney listed. I think that he's a major underdog to be listed here. Uh, but also, well, what the hell? So they had Gladney listed on the outside. They got Dantzler listed at nickel, which, no, it's not going to happen. But what's going to happen is it's going to be... Patrick Peterson, Bashar Breeland, Cameron Dantzler in some combination on the outside, and then Mac Alexander working from the slot. I think that's what's going to be to start. Plus, Harrison Hand's been getting a lot of love. Like I have a lot, uh, a lot of uh, adoration for Thirty Eight Special. And you talk to, you've seen the coaches' interviews, you've seen the players' interviews over the summer. They love them some Harrison Hand, so he can make uh, an impact year two. And then you have Harrison Smith and Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods low key might be the value signing of the year, where. He's going to have a good pass rush in front of him. He's got very competent linebacker play in front of him. He's got Harrison Smith and some veterans in the secondary. I think that Xavier Woods could return to being that ball hawk that he was at Louisiana Tech or early in his Cowboys career. Last year was a mess. Last year was a mess with Mike Nolan uh, in Dallas. Cameron Bynum's in intriguing. Fourth round pick out of Cal where he was a cornerback in college. Draft him to be a safety. How does he get into the mix early? We'll see. And then the specialists. So they got rid of the punter. So Brent Colquitt right now is the only punter on the squad. I don't know if it stays that way because Skullquit, I love him. But last year, not so much. Not so much. The kicking competition will be interesting. So you got Greg Joseph, a journeyman, you, uh, a journeyman guy that was on several teams. He was on the Bucks practice squad last year when they won the Super Bowl. And then Riley Patterson, the UDFA out of Memphis. That is a competition to watch. And then long snapper, if Turner Bernard – coming out of San Diego State, can be competent and not get the yips like Austin Cutting, uh, I think that he will supplant Andrew DePaulo because DePaulo, he might be 35 years old. Uh, he's certainly up there in age. And then uh, it comes down to punt returner. <sighs> like They do list KJ Osborne and Chad Beebe as your, your top two guys. I don't know who's going to emerge from that. And There's a lot of dudes who have big-time skill set as kick returner. You look at Kenny Nwangu, you look at ISM, both phenomenal dynamic kick returners in college, but they never return punts. And they're, we've talked about their two completely different skill sets. So, I mean, KJ Osborne right now, 
has like the thinnest of grasp on, on these jobs. But I, I do think that Nwangu or ISM will win the kick return job. And maybe BB does come back from the muff uh, against Carolina. And then, you know, maybe he's a plants KJ Osborne. But we'll see. But either way, super talented team, uh, especially on defense. I think that the cornerback room will sort itself out. It'll be fine. But there are some question marks. Like, who's going to step up as wide receiver three? Who's going to be that uh, tertiary receiving option to start? Will it be Irv Smith? Uh, but uh, we'll go from there. But overall, this is one of the better Vikings rosters that I've seen in a hot second. So that's why I'm pretty fired up about this season. But your thoughts on our thoughts. Take a look at the Vikings depth chart. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most support that work. Pull some of the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.